Immersed Robot. Hello everyone, welcome to Immerse Robot. So in this video I'm just going to show you my Elite Dangerous settings when I play on my Oculus Quest 2 using Air Link. And I do tweak these quite often, so what I'm showing here is just what I'm using at the moment. But it can vary depending on um, if I decide to change a few things like resolution or refresh rates and things like that. But this is what I'm using at the moment and I'll show you just how to tweak your experience as well depending on the specs of your PC. But first up, before we get into VR, let me just go into the oculus app on the desktop and if we go into the settings so if we go into devices and click on the quest 2 you can see that generally what i'm running here is when i play elite dangerous and most air link games actually i run i generally run them at 72 hertz and what i do is then increase the resolution so if we go on to automatic resolution we can see that it goes down to on my system a resolution of 4128 by 2096 now this will vary depending on the specs of your pc as to what the actual resolution will be but if i run games at 72 hertz generally i can run them a little bit higher elite dangerous is very demanding so we'll adjust and tweak settings in game but generally i like to keep this the same on all my air link game so i'm not adjusting it from game to game every single time and then having to restart so what i tend to do is go up to just where it clicks over to 1.2 on my system um, and that gives me a resolution of 4864 by 2448 and this is what i tend to use all the time now sometimes I will change to 80 hertz or 90 hertz or sometimes even 120 hertz just to test how it plays but if you prefer to play at those high refresh rates then of course you need to then tweak the rendering resolution in order to get it running generally okay for most titles on your system. And the other thing I want to mention here is the Oculus Debug tool where you can change a few settings and also get the performance overlay. So if you go into your PC and if you've got the Oculus installation directory in the default location then it will be in your C drive in program files, Oculus, support, Oculus diagnostics find it in this directory the oculus debug tool.exe if you double click on that then it bring you up a few options and the first thing i just want to make sure that uh, link sharpening is enabled this gives a this uses a, a sort of software algorithm to um, produce a, a slightly sharper image within the headset when you're using air link so i do tend to use that i like the results that i get with that so i always make sure that's enabled and then i go into the visible hood and if you're testing performance usually the default will be set on none but if you want to test performance or any other aspects of VR then you can just select the hood and then this will show an overlay while you're in the VR experience and give you a little bit of information like frame rate latency and those kinds of things um, the other thing quickly to mention in here if you want to get a sharper image is this encode resolution width this is something I'll go into in a separate video sometime but this can make quite a significant difference in terms of clarity and sharpness within VR when using in link or air link although it comes at a cost of performance of a performance hit so you need to be careful when using that but i'll go into that a little bit more some other time and you can check that out there's plenty of resources on the internet that will mention this and uh, give you some idea of how to use it just to get a, a better image in vr but with that out of the way let's get into the game and i'll show you a few of my default settings that i generally use and also how to tweak them slightly just for your system Okay, so here we are in VR now, and you can see the Oculus performance overlay in front of me where it's running at a relatively solid 72 frames per second. You can see that on the graph on the bottom left of the overlay. And then on the bottom right, the graph is showing a performance headroom of between sort of 35 and 40% really. So we've got quite a bit of performance headroom here in this area. But what I usually do in order to get things set up on my system, and this applies to any system that you're running this on, I usually focus on two specific areas within um, VR and you can access these through the training simulation. So one of the areas is stations and then the other one is on the surface in the SRV. So there are two training simulations which put you straight in these locations and you can then apply various settings within game and uh, just get things optimized so things are running you know the best they can really so the first one we'll go into is docking and travel and this will start us in a station 
and then we'll be able to uh, just dial in performance a little bit there. Okay, so here we are in the station in the hangar. So I'll just return to the surface just so we can see the, uh, the full station. And then when we do that, let me go into the menu system and we'll go into the graphics options. Now, usually what I do is I tend to start with a baseline of VR medium. You can start depending on your system, whichever of these you want to choose. I mean, VR low is a good one, obviously, to start on as a baseline as well. But if we just start on VR medium, and we'll see what kind of results that gives us in terms of uh, performance. Okay, so within the station, which as I mentioned, this is one of the most demanding areas of Elite Dangerous while you're playing in VR. Not the most, but it's one of the most and it definitely highlights any issues that you might have. And we can see we're still running at a solid 72 frames per second, but the performance headroom is very low now. So that means we've not got a lot we can do here. However, if your headroom is a little bit higher, then there are a few things that we can do. So let's just go into options. Now, primarily what I tend to do is for me personally, there's a few things which I like to, uh, clarity and, and sharpness is really where I like to focus most of my efforts. Now, anti-aliasing, I always leave off. I don't like anti-aliasing in some games and the Elite Dangerous being one, I like that sharper image, even though you get sort of like that slight shimmering on the edges of objects, that pixel crawl on the edges of objects. But the two things that I generally focus on, I leave everything here as standard and then I tend to focus on super sampling here and then HMD image quality. And using different ratios of these two items, you can get a performance to image quality ratio which suits you the best. Now keeping in mind with what I did originally in the Oculus desktop software that I've, I'm already super sampling to 1.2 on AirLink anyway. So that's already got a, a super sampling applied. But some people, what some people recommend is actually lowering the super sampling in-game down to something like 0 0.85 or 0 0.75 and then raising HMD image quality. So I'll just try that quickly while we're waiting here. So if we raise it down to say 0 0.75 super sampling, raise HMD image quality up to 1.25. Now, effectively, we more, should more or less have a very similar image quality here. And um, performance is very similar as well. Now, what you can do, what you will find is that as you adjust these ratios, you might find a benefit of doing one or the other or keeping or raising both. So this is the difficulty and this is the part where tweaking really uh, comes into its own and it can take a while to get this right on any individual system. The thing is, on what I'm showing you here at the very moment is that we're matching pretty much exactly to what we were doing before. So let me just go in and change some things a little bit more and we'll see if we can get retain a decent image quality but get performance up. Now if we keep that 0 0.75 and we'll raise HMD image quality up to 1.5. Now this will probably push us below that performance headroom and send us into reprojection. Let's give it a try anyway. Yeah, so now we're running in reprojection. So you can see there we're now running at 36 frames per second. Performance headroom is gone negative. So while we're in stations now, we'll be running in constant reprojection. However, I predict that when we get out into space, that won't be the case. So let's go and take a look at that. So now image quality is probably noticeably better than it was when I had it on 1.0 super sampling and 1.0 HMD image quality. As you would expect, I've raised one down slightly and raised one up quite a lot. So now here we are in space and we've got a constant 72 frames per second. And I don't mind this as a way of playing actually. So native frame rates in space and then dropping down into reprojection, leaning on that software safety net of asynchronous space warp while in the more demanding areas such as stations and planet surfaces. So this is not a bad way of playing honestly. Um, some people don't like it, some people do prefer to keep that native frame rate. So if we head back in, uh, let me just uh, request docking. And what I'll do this time, let me just slow down. I'm going to lower the graphical settings back down. Just so we can hit those native frame rates again. 
So we'll just go keep everything back down to 1.0 and for the most part we should be able to hit native frame rate. So let's head back into the station now and see what we get. Okay, so we do drop down. Usually as we go through uh, the mail slot, you do drop down a little bit. But now you can see that we're back in the station and we are hitting that native 72 frames per second. So for me at the moment, it looks like um, that the, the standard preset of VR medium is probably my best option at the moment to hit native frame rates. If you want to push up clarity very slightly, then you might have to put up with asynchronous space warp within the more demanding areas. But let's just go to the other main area that I like to test out, which is a planet surface. Okay, so the training simulation for planet surfaces is this one, the Advanced Surface Recon Vehicle tutorial. And this puts you, first of all, in a ship on the surface where you have to land, and then it puts you in an SRV. And SRVs can be quite demanding on performance as well if you're going around various planets. So let's start this one and see what we get. Okay, so here we are with those standard VR medium settings, 1.0 super sampling, 1.0 HMD image quality, still super sampling just as before in the Oculus desktop software slightly, and we're running okay at around those 72 frames per second, but the it is a little bit more inconsistent here, you can see it dropping down slightly there, here and there, but most, most of the time we're hitting 72 frames per second. So I'll land this, get out in the SRV, and we'll take another look. Okay, so here in the SRV now on the planetary surface, still using those exact same settings, standard VR medium presets, and we're still, you know, utilizing around 72 frames per second. Uh, it does drop down, look, there we go. So it's not exactly consistent, and it's probably very difficult to get it exactly consistent in Odyssey. Um, you could probably have a better time in Horizons getting this kind of thing a little bit more consistent, but I'm focusing on Odyssey here just to see what we can do. Um, and not handling the SRV is something I could do extremely well, it seems. But anyway, what I'll do, let me go over to the uh, settlement because if you're using the SRV next to settlements, then it can make quite a big impact. Okay, so just driving around this settlement here, it does seem like we can still maintain 72 frames per second quite well. This won't always be the case, more, um, and yeah, it does drop down there into asynchronous space warp as well, 36 frames per second on this part. And when driving around settlements, this is one thing that I've noticed actually, you will, it's one of the most demanding areas and it can really affect CPU um, fluctuations. As I've shown in my last video actually, just uh, when even when you're just walking around settlements, more um, sort of bigger settlements than this one, you will notice that there will be CPU spikes and things like that that can affect performance. But these are, I'm sort of focusing on the real, you know, the most demanding areas of the game. So if you can get it running okay around these areas, then you should have a pretty good time, sort of 85, 90% of the time, I would say. So with the fact that we are super sampling outside, your options are really focused around super sampling within the Oculus desktop app, and then changing, adjusting settings within super sampling in-game and HMD quality. Now, it just so happens that with my current setup and how things are, it seems like the preset within game of VR medium is probably best suited to me if I want to maintain that native 72 frames per second. But if I am okay with sort of reprojection, asynchronous space warp kicking in on the more demanding areas, such as the area that I'm on now, then I can raise up HMD quality to say 1.25 and get a very slightly sharper image within the headset. And these are the things that you need to tweak. These are the three sections, the Oculus desktop app, super sampling in game and HMD quality in game. These are the things that you can balance out and change for each system. Now it can take a, a while to get these things right actually, um, but people do swear by the fact that lowering in-game super sampling and raising HMD quality can give 
better results sometimes. So that's something to look into. If you do find that you're struggling to get the right balance, give that a try. Try dropping down super sampling in-game and raising HMD quality. You might have more luck with that. But that's pretty much it for me. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video, and I'll see you next time.